Hi everyone, welcome in. I'm Maggie, maggiesbliss.com. I'm here with a quick collective card reading. Oh shoot, let me just get the box so I can tell you where the card came from, where the deck came from. Celestial Frequencies, Oracle Cards, and Healing activation Activators. Um, Light Star, of course. It's her second, second or third um, set of Oracle deck. I think it's her second. I love the first. Still using it. This is her second. Just came out a few months ago. I love it. I've used it a few times with you guys, or at least once. Um, okay. How are you guys doing? It is Thursday evening here in Sedona, Arizona. I am Maggie MaggieMaggiesBliss.com. I forget if I said that, so I'm saying it again. <laughs> and I just wanted to come in, give a little bit of information about what's happening right now for the collective. Um, I can see my kitty really wants to leave this room right now, so I may get up and let him out the door if he starts meowing. Oh, he's going to do the scratch under the door thing. He's so cute. Here he is. Did you hear the meow? Let me just, I wanted to give you a little quick virtual smudge. I'm going to open the door for kitty and be right back. Kitty interruption done. So, yes, we have hit Mercury retrograde again yesterday. So it's three or four times a year. It happens for about two and a half to three weeks, depending. Um, oh, just take it in <laughs> after that little announcement, if you didn't already know. <laughs> Mercury retrograde is is interesting we need it obviously it wouldn't happen several times a year if we didn't um i find it often very productive and helpful um a lot of people um might see it as a an annoyance but it's it's really cool um even when I don't like it, I know it's there for a reason. Um, oftentimes, so Mercury, Mercury retrograde, it, it's a planet that affects us just like the moon affects us. We are made of water, mostly water, and the moon affects water, right? So it makes sense that we will, the moon phases are a part of our, our uh, <laughs> um, energies and what we go through. Now, uh, with Mercury retrograde being the communication planet, when it goes retrograde, it tends to uh, throw off communication, um, making it a little bit wonky, a little bit more challenging. It's helpful during these times to not fill out any contracts, no signing of contracts, unless you have to. Then if you have to, Make sure, hi Maggie, I'm saying hi to Maggie, <laughs> I am Maggie too, um, unless um, you need to sign something. So you check, you know, cross the T's, dot the I's, but you check everything at least three times so that you make sure everything is right because it, it makes it a little bit more challenging because you might not remember all the things and you'll read it and think it's okay, but then you right? It's a little bit, it's, it's, it's fun. <laughs> but uh, oftentimes with communication, it will mess with communication things like phones and computers. It'll even mess with your cars if you have any car issues. And if you have procrastinated, you will find Mercury, Mercury retrograde a little more challenging. But, um, but it's actually quite helpful. However, I have to say, it started yesterday. We were in the, when Mercury goes, goes retrograde. We tend to be in what they call the shadow of Mercury retrograde for about two weeks, and then two weeks after. So it's kind of like the full moon, where we work our way up to it and then out of it. So we're working our way up to it. So now we're in it. We're in it for about two and a half, three weeks. I think it goes direct like January first, like right on 2024 beginning. We're going direct, heading, hit, hitting the ground running, right? But till then, we have to deal with it. And what I have, I have um, observed starting yesterday, um, where, yes, it will, it tends to mess with communication and different things like your phone, your computer. What I've noticed, though, is 
this um, communication with people to people. So I've noticed that um, things are going wonky with communication with people to people. That's a part of communication, right? You have to watch what you say. You have to first think about it and mull it over. Try like because it can be so easy to be blunt and like too maybe too much of what you need to express, and maybe you didn't take a breath to like soften the blow. It's very much like Aries, which I'm an Aries sun, and I have Aries and a few other things in my in in my chart. So a lot of fire, and Aries tend to be very blunt and full of fire. Um, but, however, uh, what I noticed is, um, yesterday, there's been some weird communication things between people. Um, even when you're explaining yourself com clearly, they might not be hearing it clearly, which is kind of uh, sucky, but we get through it, right? What I've noticed, so even I don't like remember certain things about a conversation and think, right? So there, so here's an example and I will <clears throat> generalize it as much as possible. So there was an, a thing that was, a thing that was shared from a family member to another family member. And then that family member shared it with me and had said, don't share it with so-and-so or, or this so-and-so. And so I was like, I did. I'm not a good secret keeper, but I will keep a secret when people tell me. But for some reason, when this was shared with me yesterday, I didn't remember the part of the don't share it with this person and that person. Like it, it but it was like good news. So I didn't know that it was like bad to share. It was like really cool. Um, so I talked with another family member who happens to be on the list of don't share it with. And I didn't know that. I didn't remember that. So, um, I was just having a natural conversation and said, Oh, did he not share that with you? Oh my God. I don't know if that was like a thing I should have said. Um, so it just happened. It was really, it's really good news. So I didn't feel that bad about it, but I did feel bad about not remembering. So, then it was shared later that they did say don't share. And I was like, oh my gosh, I didn't know it. So I'm sitting here. I'm kind of like getting a little stress within myself. Um, a little bit of a shoot. Why did you do that? And trying to do a little clearing about the whole thing. I know on the grand scheme of things, not a big deal, right? But I want to make sure I'm honoring people's privacy, whatever they w w intended and this came through and I was just like, okay, I have to start clearing this out. So of course I tapped into Ho'oponopono so that I could start to like get into right action, right? Ho'oponopono is a, the ancient Hawaiian clearing technique where you say four phrases, hello, Lisa. And oh my gosh, Pearl is your last name? I saw Pearl on a license plate, kind of stuck out to me today in Sedona. Those synchronicities are heightened here in Sedona and wherever you're close to a vortex, whether it's Sedona or somewhere else. So, and, and my name, uh, my birth name, I, I go by Maggie, but my birth certificate says Margaret. So right. Tons of nicknames for Margaret, Marge, Maggie, Meg, Peg, Peggy. Anyway, <laughs> I looked up my name, Margaret, and it means Pearl in the dictionary or like what names mean. I don't know how they come to that, but I looked it up and I was like, oh, that's interesting. Cool. So my name is a Pearl. Like you're this rare gem that takes, you know, however long the ocean to make in this, you know, shell and interesting. So <laughs> pay attention guys, because whatever I'm saying here is for you guys too. So this rare gem information is also very relevant because what came through is, yes, I fucked up and I shared something I shouldn't have, right? Oh, hello, Maggie, again, we are, yes, we are, we are Pearl. And, um, I had to say, okay, I'm sorry. Here's the four phrases for Ho'oponopono. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I love you. Thank you. There's so much more to the frequency and vibration of each one. And it's about coming into right action with what happened with the people that it might have happened with or the situation right so or both and now my kitty wants to come in <laughs> so I to let him back in. hold on guys <laughs>
He's in, he's out. He does this to me in the middle of the night too, and I always fall for it and I get up because the, the meow was so cute. So <laughs> so I say, you know, ho'oponopono, I'm sorry, please forgive me, I love you, thank you. And I'm tapping into each of the phrases. I'm sorry for whatever in me created this situation. Please forgive me. And that's all about forgiving yourself too, as well as the other person, so that you're not holding anyone in this prison, right? You, whenever you don't forgive someone, you're in that prison with them until you forgive them, until you work it through, right? You got to work it through. Do the shadow work. Um, and I love you. Highest vibration, sending love to the situation, to the people that may be involved. And then thank you. Gratitude, wicked high in vibration and saying, thank you for correcting the situation. You're already there. You've manifested it. So that's the short and quick of Ho'oponopono. Obviously there's a lot more to it, but, um, it's just feeling it out. So I have these cards to help us through <laughs> this uh, fun uh, Mercury retrograde right now, at least easing into it. Because we know we're, con we're in holiday season. Uh, whether you're celebrating Christmas like I am, Hanukkah, um, Kwanzaa, all the things. Whatever you're celebrating and then making our way in winter solstice. Oh, so good. I hope to come to you live the day after the official winter solstice. I have um, time to be able to share uh, with you guys on that day. So I'm hoping that I'll be able to just get on Bell I got on Bell Rock last year at this time for winter solstice. So I hope to do that for you guys. So, Mercy, so what I was saying is this communication can be a little wonky and you have to like, right? Like I really, really get present with those conversations so that I can really say, okay, what in me, what do I need to share and how can I share it clearly so that the intent is pure and clear and clean and beautiful, whatever it is. So I'm sorry, right? I'm sorry for whatever I did. So I forgot. So like if communication with people seems to be the thing that's happening right now, right? Or at least as we make our way through different moon phases, they happen two and two and a half days. So we get into each different moon phase as we make our way back to the full moon, which is coming on the 26th. So we have winter solstice 21st. Then we have tw uh, a Christmas for all those who celebrate Christmas on the 25th. And then the 26th, which is the actual, like the full moon. So we'll feel it on Christmas, by the way. Well, let me tell you, we're going to feel that full moon. <laughs> um, but we'll talk about that another time, possibly on uh, winter solstice. We'll chat about what that full moon is and all that fun stuff. So be careful what you say. A little th things might come out wrong. Just acknowledge it. If you're the one saying it wrong, just say, I get it. I actually really didn't mean to say it in that way. And you got to push forward and just say, I'm sorry. And like start that forgiveness process with yourself. If there was something really huge that you're like, no, that's not what I even wanted to say. Because the communication is a little wonky. So pay attention to that. And first card is our petition. It's, it's from, like I said, the light star second, uh, creation of her Oracle, Oracle deck. She creates these with the intention of light codes in all of her decks. And she creates the, I love it. She like, I've been creating my Oracle deck and she's been a wonderful inspiration in that she not only channels it like I do, she's bringing it onto the page or onto the Oracle card like I am right now for my deck and filling these with that energy. And, and it is, it's filled with the energy of the person creating it and the energy of the message. So this one is a 26 card, which reduces to eight in numerology. And that's as above, so below, as within, so without. So we're create, we are the magician in, in uh, tarot, right? The magician is that beautiful as above, so below message. And we are the creators of our lives. And this also reminds me of twin flame. It is very much so turn eight up on sideways and it's the infinity symbol, right? So we have the participation card. I'm going to try to get you to be able to see that. But first, let me read the tiny words. Elven alchemy for the participation card. So here, what I'm seeing is so much of, please, if you're invited to things outside of your house, and I'm an introvert, so I like a hang at home. I like to be at home with my peeps and 
just I like to get cozy and be lazy. My bedroom is my favorite place. It's my office. It's my <laughs> it's my meditation room. It's my everything. It's right. I have a Taurus moon with my Aries sun and Libra rising. So the Taurus moon, they like to be cozy and they like to be lazy. And <laughs> And they love their bedroom. They like, right? Like creating and Taurus people tend to be very creative and they can create um, either through InDesign, like through interior decorating, through graphic design, through tat I had a tattoo artist that was Taurus Sun. I was like, yes. So they they can be very creative. They're about their it's an earth sign and they bring the beauty into the earth. And it's about seeing that beauty, experiencing the beauty, sharing the beauty. Now and they're good, good with money. They tend to be. <laughs> now, what I'm saying is here, right? You want to participate with the people. Get outside of your home. If you're invited to parties and holiday events and just going out into a group event that sounds great to you, but you're like, no, nah, I'd rather just hang at home. Get out there anyway. Go anyway. I know it's Mercury Retrograde, but we have to live through it three or four times a year. We can't be in home every time it's Mercury retrograde or whatever retrograde is happening because we just got through a ton of planets being retrograde. All of them be go have been going direct. We have Mercury that's retrograde just now. Um, so just think about what you're communicating before you do, right? And and you got to deal with it. Like whatever's coming to you is meant to come to you. And this is telling me to participate. Whatever that is, right? Go out there. Enjoy the gatherings, be with the people, and because it's sharing this beautiful um, togetherness with these two beautiful elves, very much so about getting together with people. I know and I'm seeing a lot of people like getting together with their person, their right person for them, their human, right? Who's your counterpart? And if you don't have that, it's this is saying that it's well aspect right now for you to get out there. And you, it, and it doesn't even have to be a romantic relationship, friendship. So many people are out there looking for their tribe, their soul tribe. You will gather this and do magic together. So get out there and do that. And there was something else. Uh, like when you're reading an Oracle deck, and this is how I roll when I do, it's very much a way channeling event. And it's very much so about connecting to whatever shows up in the card and that message. So here he's holding his staff, which is very much so very masculine. I have a staff over here off to my, I don't want to show you because I have a little mess in the corner of my clothes, but um, I have a beautiful staff here, very shamanic and um, get out there because this person's going to create the magic with you. They're going to be your perfect counterpart, whether it's friendship or partnership in romantic sense, they're still going to be the person that helps you bring forth the magic, but also to just to help you feel heart centered. This feels so much very heart energy. The green is really showing up strongly here and it's just saying you're going to feel more fulfilled. So get out there. If you're invited somewhere or you see something, you're like, I really want to go to that, but I'm either shy, introvert, like, um, I don't want to, <laughs> all the things like you want to, but you don't get out there. And that's what that's saying to me. The next one is a huge action activation card. And it says, uh, it's a oof, 38, which is 11 again, twin flame number. So finding your soul tribe and, or your romantic counterpart and, um, a master number of connection to the divine, to the energy within, as well as it's called an integration card and it's higher self integration. So check out this card. It very much so is activating you as you see the energy in the card. Look deeply into the card. You see this person and they're tuning in to those chakras, the third eye, the crown, the soul star, the higher chakra, the higher gateways above the soul star, which are... Stellar gateway, cosmic gateway, universal gateway, all the gateways, right? And the ones that are surrounding you and helping you, which I see so much as your guide, your system. Your higher self is your guide. They know more about you than you know yourself, right? So here I'm seeing so much happening in activation of integration. So you can integrate all of these beautiful energies of your higher self and allowing you to connect more deeply, especially now as for us in the Northern Hemisphere heading into winter solstice and that winter season is rest, 
is integration, is be. Now, whether you're watching this from the Northern Hemisphere or the Southern Hemisphere, which my heart is so much called to the Southern Hemisphere as well, um, where right now they're heading into summer solstice. It's the opposite because the nature always balances itself out. So again, counterpart energy coming in. Nature does that. People are going to come and help balance you out and bring you what you are missing or what you are lacking so that you can feel full and complete. And your soul tribe does that for you. Your higher self does that for you. And the final card is a twenty, a 39 card, which reduces to 12 and or, right, again, 3. So trifecta, you have the moon phases, right, like when we are before the full moon, during the full moon, after the full moon, <laughs> and the sun, moon rising. And it's the, um, um, I'm thinking of it. It's coming to me. <laughs> Let me think. It is Father, Son, Holy Ghost. I don't know why that was eluding me, but that happens. So here we have in this beautiful card, all four elements. I see all four elements here. I see the water, which is flow. I see the sun and the lightning strike of energy that's flowing throughout the card, the different energies and like sun-like symbols here. And I see obviously earth and the trees and the grass and home and temple. Actually, this strikes me as more of a temple, the temple that you are, the pillar, right? So earth, air, she's breathing in the air, fire, water, all of the elements coming together. This is a transmutation card and it says cellular intelligence. <laughs> I just had to take a moment to figure out what that said. Couldn't read it in the light. So also, if you look closely at this card, you will see Chokure and Daikumyo of the Reiki symbols. Very much so huge energy healing ushering our way. So allow this energy to flow in. Please, please, please get outside. Hot or cold, get out into the elements for 10 minutes a day at least. I like to do it three times a day, like in the morning, of course, my favorite time of the day, and then around lunchtime and then around supper time so that I can just really soak in the present moment and the energies of now and of all the elements. When you're out in nature, you're in all the elements. You've got them all. And this is truly saying to connect, connect with the crystals that work for you right now. And like for me, what I've been connecting with so much so for the past several days, maybe five days, whew, I love it, uh, is malachite and azurite. They grow together naturally. Azurite is that sparkly blue and malachite is that green energy that you see. And it often shows up in beautiful curvy um, um, jewelry. You'll see it in jewelry and stuff like that. So Malachite and Azurite. Azurite is something that John Casey swore to before he crossed over to assist him with his third eye opening, to assist him with connecting to the messages that are coming in and the spirits that are coming in into channel. Uh, Malachite, very much so divine feminine energy, heart chakra opening energy. So they combine the uh, beautiful deep purple indigo energy of the third eye and the heart chakra, that beautiful opening. So for me right now, that's what I've been connected to more than what I love, which is my amethyst or my um, moldavite. I have Moldavite here. I wear it 24-7 all the time. I've worn it for years as well as my quartz. Um, so these guys are always on me and right now and I have been for the past several months. My beautiful Chicana um, made made from the stone of Machu Picchu. Um, so that's the Chichapan I'm wearing, but what are you drawn to? Because that is, those are the mess, those are the like healing energies that you need right now. So, um, crystals, not only are earth energy, but they hold them all because they are embedded in the earth. They are soaked in the sun, the full moon. They are soaked in the water and the earth. You, and, and quartz itself is touching all of the stones around the earth around Gaia. So you can pull in quartz if you have nothing else to 
and it can act as if. It will act as a stone that you need the energy for. Maybe you can't get it at the moment, but you can just be like, hey, Quartz, can you please act like Azurite right now? And I consecrate you to be Azurite frequency vibration, and let's work with that energy. And then when you're done, and only when you're done, then you can deconsecrate it and say, okay, I release that energy, and let's come back to center. Maybe you cleansing and clear it under the sun and the moon. So this energy is so much so telling me that not only are you healing and your these healing energies are ushering you in, it's about getting out there and and really transmuting all of the ick so that you can be out in nature and transmuting and listening. It's going to help you hear your guides more. These, it feels like that little angel on your shoulder guide in the corner there. So yeah. Hopefully this has helped some of you and I hope you have an amazing rest of your Thursday evening, your Mercury retrograde, hopefully, and I'll be seeing you sometime at the end of next week for the winter solstice awesomeness. What's been coming through to me is the Akashic Records and often like it'll show to me as either a book or crystal tablets. This time it was very much so, woo, light codes energies all around me, glowing with their energy and that energy. And that is something that I'm going to bring in to our winter solstice meditation when I meet with you guys next week. So hopefully that resonates with you. Also, please let me know. I am about to kick off my 2024 coursework. I have tons of classes available now, live, recorded, in person, but let me know what you want. What do you want to see in my classes? Because I have a few requests now that I'm incorporating. A lot of people want to know about the chakras. I have that in. Uh, some people really, really want their activations of energy to upgrade their system. What are you looking for? I have done shamanic type elements. I really, really, this one, the 2024 is all about getting back to my roots. And for me, witchy, shamanic, goddessy energy. That's going to be a part of our 2024 coursework that I'll be doing live with you. And uh, that may include the attunements and energy uh, rights that I already offer. It may include uh, more of that, but then also the energy, like hermetic principles, hermetic principles, sorry, and chakra system as it has been requested. Activations for sure, and very much so sacred sound journeys with my crystal bowls, drum, and uh, a gratitude day included in there because that's very much so very important. Science has proven that when you show your gratitude and you feel in it, you're really putting that energy out there and you're calling it back to you. It's your frequency and vibration that you align with and then you call that back into you. That's how you manifest. How to meet your guides. Okay, that's awesome. That's actually really cool feedback and it's so helpful to hear feedback. It's not always there. So thank you very much. So how to meet your guides. That's going to be in there now. I, it has to be in there. And I'd love to know any more information that you're like, I would really love to learn from her this, this, and this. Let me know. I really want to uh, know so that I gear it towards what people need now to be helpful, right? So um, <laughs> if that sounds good to you, just let me know. You can comment in this post or you can just message me privately, whatever it's up to you. Um, so I'll be seeing you guys very soon. Have an amazing rest of your day, night, evening, whatever, whenever you're watching. Blessed be. And your night.